Working on the S10 again. This time we got some kind of a noise in the belts. First thing we got to do, we're going to remove all this stuff here so we can get down to the pulleys. And we'll start right here with this one and then get the other one off. So. Little wire connector right here. See there? Little wire connector. Another hose clamp. Uh -huh. Now this is what happens. Uh, you get this thing here and you try to snake it out from underneath the radiator hose. And of course it don't want to do that. Just set it over here. And what happens is you wind up breaking the radiator cap or the radiator hose off. So now I've got to buy a radiator. Something else we find this high pressure air conditioning line. Yeah, can you hear that? Yeah. It's got a hole in it right there. And every time you move it just a little bit, it squirts out even more Freon. So we need these two radiator, these two air conditioning hoses and a new radiator. And we still haven't got in here to figure out whether it's the alternator or an idler pulley that's got a bad bearing in it. So we go deeper. Now we can get the good stuff. All right, so here's the deal. We pulled the belt off so we could isolate different things. Now this is the noise. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but the bearing in this thing is absolutely shot. So now you can isolate down here to the idler pulley, spin it. It's quiet. That's quiet. That's quiet. Water pump's brand new. That pulley's quiet. Mm -hmm. So, we got about an alternator. We got to get air conditioning hoses and, and a radiator. All right, here's what I've done. I haven't videoed everything because I'm sort of just moving along. Radiator hose goes here to over here. Remember, we broke the radiator here, and we took it off over there like a like a good person. We pulled the fan shroud completely out because it comes apart in two pieces so we was able to take the top half off and then snake the bottom half out. Went ahead and pulled the air breather out that goes here. That way I can drain what's left of the antifreeze out from down there. And of course we're catching all of it. So now what I've got to do, oh yeah, also disconnect the negative side of the battery. As you see, it's, it's just stuck down in there. Uh, now, this bolt, which is bolted in from the back side, and this bolt will, should let the radiator drop. Or the alternator, rather. There, sh there might be another bolt back here behind it. I'm not sure yet. Can't really see it. I'm gonna try getting these two out and see if that does it. All right, so here's the old alternator. Two bolts, one here, one here. The long one, it came in from the back, something like that. Here's where they go. The long one bolts to right here. And the short one bolts in right here. And then there are two connectors on the back this one here and this battery lead and you can see them right here here's the battery lead terminal and here's where the other plug goes so not a hard alternator to get out as long as you don't break anything and now we have new parts have a new alternator, 
this is the air conditioning hose pretty long bag it's got some new o-rings and everything on it already we've got new radiator for the one that I broke we've cleaned all those parts right there up that come off the truck that's going back on all right Took all this stuff off of it now I compared this to the old one when I was at the store so things you got to look for is make sure number one your mounting points are right here and here they are then based off of where your mounting points are make sure all your terminals are in the right place and they are so now we're ready to put it in First. now that I've got all the wires put on now I can start putting the bolts in so I put it in place I've already started the bolts Remember, you got a short one here long one here that comes in from the back side so now I'm just going to tighten those bolts up Now if you forget where how your belt is routed, you should have this diagram on your fan shroud, the top fan shroud that's got all your information on it. It's got a vacuum diagram, which very little vacuum comes off this motor. But there's your your fan belt, your serpentine belt routing. So if you forget how the routing goes, you can always come back to this and look. And it's on. Make sure it's on all the pulleys right. That looks not so good. See, just about messed up over here. It's not on completely right. Now we're good. This line and this one here are the transmission lines. One of the transmission cooler of the radiator. They've got to come off before we can get the radiator out. We're to that point now where we're ready to take it out. Now, down here at the bottom of the radiator is the lower radiator hose. Now we've got to get it off. Then we can just lift it out. Close up our pet cock over here so we don't lose everything else. Don't make any big, any more of a mess than we already have. All right, so while the radiator's out and we can get to these nuts down on this side, we're replacing this air conditioning hose. So, I'm going to show you a little trick. Well, you've got a nut like that. See if I can get you a little closer. When you've got a nut like this, always hold the back side so that it don't twist off. Now, I don't have line wrenches this big. And I don't have a wrench this big. But this inside is a one and an eighth. And then there's this. Okay. So now this come off pretty easy. 
there's no camera angle I can get to that allow you to be able to see this and me be able to take it off. But right here is where it's at. One one bolt goes right down between the two 13 millimeter wrench. There's the bolt. You can set it right there. You can loosen it up. Make sure you grab all your seals and everything in there. Now you're going to lose your hoses are going to have some oil in it. We want to catch as much of that oil as we can because we need to put that back in. So to put the oil back in the ready in the air compressor, I've got a funnel like this that I've got. I don't even know where I got this, but it comes in real handy. But the low pressure side is on the top. It always goes in the low pressure side, which is the fat hose coming off uh, the air compressor. So now I'm just going to pour it right back in. Now there's not going to be that much because we're just changing it out of what was caught up in the hoses. If we was changing the air compressor, we'd have to put in a few ounces worth and we would be putting all fresh oil in. All right, so here's our new hose. It's got all the O-rings already on it, already looked at it, which is good. And it come with a couple of extras over here. So all we gotta do now is start putting it together. Here's something I didn't show y'all, but I took it out to make it easier to get to the top alternator bolt. But it's this here. This is the overflow hose, uh, tank. See, when you take the battery out, it just falls right in place. And it uses these little small nuts. There's three of them. Right, now, we can set the computer in. It does not want to be very cooperative most of the time. It, didn't, it wasn't too bad. And with this, you'll find three bolts. Don't tighten those up super tight. They don't have to be that tight. Now we'll set in the lower shield. Right here. Now before you get it locked in place, you get to put this you get a hose that has to be fastened. different places under here. This one I'm going to close up on me again. Sitting in there like that. And again, you can set it in place. This is a little kit that comes with the radiator. These are for your transmission lines. And I realized what was on the truck are quick fittings. And it even comes with a little tool, which is pretty handy. 
what you do is you put this around your line and push it through and what it does is it pulls these little teeth out you put it around here like this and then you twist on it and it separates it then you just pull the hose out of it you don't even have to put a wrench on these but you do have to put them in the new radiator because you've got brand new ones fresh loctite new o-ring on the inside you want that believe me you want that And now the radiator is ready to go in the truck. Make sure you've got the little cushion mounts that go down here on the frame in place. I just noticed this one had pulled off with the old radiator and I missed it. So now, set them in. And just push them in. Wiggle them until they snap. Good. Now we're ready to put. So we've got to put this lower radiator hose on on the other side. And I don't think there's a whole lot of angle that I can get to that you can see that. Now for the top part of the fan shroud. Alright, I put the thermostat housing, the hose, on the thermostat housing because I'm not going to be able to get to it very easily. But I'm, <laughs> for obvious reasons that we already know, we're going to leave this loose. So now it's time to put the air, hose, the air intake hose on. Now we can put this on. So first we get that on. So this side here, they just push in place. Well, we. We used all these components to filter the old antifreeze because, well, being out here outside, and this is uh, day two because I run out of time the first day, got a few bugs in it, so we had to filter it out. And uh, you can see the bugs that are in it. Anyway, we used a towel to filter it through the towel, and then we found that an old shop rag works best. So we filled the radiator up. Now we're going to start it and wait for the thermostat to open. All right, while it's running and we're waiting on that thermostat, let's take a look here. Uh, let's see, that's the one we're looking at. Charging system looks like it's working good. That's good. Oil pressure is good. Temperature has not moved yet, obviously. And we got enough gasoline to do it. And we're at 207,000 miles. Not too bad on a four cylinder. Ah, there it goes. 
That's what I was looking for right there. All right. This is a gauge for putting in Freon. And this is the Freon that we're using. You see that? R134A. Everything uses 134A now. The old cars had the R12 stuff in it. You will not be able to find that. And if you still have that stuff, you'll have to convert your car over to this 134A. Now this I got off of another bottle that we used a few weeks ago. And it'll work on these also. So, first, we'll take loose the cap on the low pressure side. Put that to it. Then we have to start the engine back. Turn the air condition up on high. Tighten this all the way up. These work best if you hold them upside down. All right, that's the third can. Turn it upside down, shake it. You'll feel the can. It'll, it'll get cold when it's got Freon in it, and it'll get a lot. The coolness will go away once it's empty. Three cans, and the thing is blowing very cold. That's probably just a little bit too much Freon. You have a little bit of residual in the can still. Pull the cap. This will be getting very cold. That's getting very cold. Well, we're pretty much done. All right, I want to show you this. Now, if you get too much Freon in it, it can freeze up. And you'll know you'll start seeing a lot of ice build up around here and over here on that large piece over there and on this. Now, what you can do if you've got too much in it, you can release the cap and take a screwdriver, smaller screwdriver than this. Well, that's about it. And do that. That will release just a little bit of Freon at a time until you no longer have the free the the freezing up problem and other than that our alternator is working good our radiator is topped off temperatures running great we're done so that's all there is to this one all right guys that's all on this one Remember, if I could do it, anybody can do it. Ain't nothing but nuts and bolts. See you next time.